four and one against the tribe. Royals defensively. De Jesus, Chris, and Guillen in the outfield. And around the horn, Tian, Bloomquist, Kiaspo, and Butler. Mike Avila is still out. And Miguel Olivo starts behind the plate for Brian Bannister. I think what they're waiting on, not all the lights have come on. And still plenty of sunlight for walking to a concession stand and ordering a hot dog and finding your seat. But I just don't know if there's enough light on the field because <laughs> the sun has descended far enough where most of the field is in the shadows. And believe it or not, the lights do help even during a day game. Well, they really do. And I suppose you do still have shadows as you go on in the night. But these would be great lights in the minor leagues. <laughs> So if you were in Wichita three, four years ago, you wouldn't be complaining about these lights? Not at all. <laughs> now the lights in the outfield are on. They're on in full effect. And the lights on the third base side are on. The home plate umpire is Bill Miller over talking to Eric Wedge. So... I guess we're just going to wait it out. I wondered if when Bill Miller went and talked to Eric Wedge, if Eric Wedge agrees that they'll start without those lights on, and Trey Hillman agrees that they'll start with those lights on, they'll just go ahead. Now they're starting to warm up, that maybe they would just start without the lights, but they're going to wait till those things do begin to warm up. It's not quite the same as a light bulb in your bedroom that you flip the switch and it's on right away. Well, there's a good chance they'll be ready to go by the time Bannon gets warmed and ready to go. But they do take a, they do take a while to get on. You can look around and you got some on, some off, and looks like they're starting to heat up a little bit. And now Bill Miller tells as Drupal Cabrera to walk to the plate, and we're ready to go. Now, as Drupal Cabrera has had a good year, he's sitting 311, but. Frank, I think no matter how you look at it, if your projected number nine hitter a month into the season, a month and a half is your leadoff hitter, something's gone wrong. Well, it means your your main guy is struggling, and when and, and Eric Wedge is trying to come up with a combination that can not only help the ball club get going, but also uh, help Grady Sizemore in that number one spot, maybe by moving him down, uh, get him a, a, a get him in a situation where he doesn't feel like got to carry the ball club. And he drives it into deep left center field, so he continues to hit. That is his 10th double of the year on the second pitch of the game. You know, we saw him do this uh, when, when the Indians came through the last time. He had a ball over David Day as Lucy's head in left field, so you know he's got that kind of power. And uh, maybe maybe a guy that they may they may need to adjust their defense to because he, he's shown that he can drive the ball over the left fielder's head. And we still haven't quite figured out what the wind is going to do at New Kaufman Stadium, but at least right now the flags would suggest that you're going to get some help if you drive the ball to left field and left center. So now number two hitting Grady Sizemore. The last time the Indians tried this was in 2007 when they traded for Kenny Lofton at the trading deadline. They had Lofton lead off. They had Sizemore bat second. And it just didn't work out. And even though Sizemore has the power and the RBI potential to hit in the middle of the order at that time, they just realized, you know what? Grady Sizemore is at his best, and the Cleveland Indians are at their best when he's batting first. Well, she's proven that over and over again. I think right now they're trying to take advantage of the fact that he's pulling the ball more until he gets himself back to where he's using the middle of the field. If you can get man on like now, he can pull him, get him to third base. And that's pounded to deep center field. Long run for Coco, and at the warning track, hauls it in. Well, in another ballpark, that might have been back to back extra base hits for the Indians. But Bannister keeps him in the deepest part of the ballpark and one down. But well, this is that changeup, Ryan, the changeup that stays up out over the plate. And we talked about it before that that three finger changeup, the ball has to turn over and it has to go down when it just goes across in the zone. 
left handed hitters really track that ball really well and Grady Sizemore drove that ball in, into uh, deep left center, left center field. And the Royals will bring the infield in in the and, first and inning. And really that's unusual in the first inning because you're trying to keep a big inning off of you but I think they looked at the fact that uh, Cliff Lee's not giving up many runs so they're going to try to keep the keep the keep the score down right here. So the big thing now is Benny just got to get a ground ball and make this work. Here's the major leagues leading hitter Victor Martinez hitting at 401. And into left field to give Cleveland a one to nothing lead. And Martinez is hitting much better than that 401 overall against the Royals. That base hit. He is 13 for 25 against KC this year. Right here, uh, Banny throws a two seamer that stays inside, and Victor Martinez so strong, he just kind of fisted it out there. What might have been a little bit, a little bit different looking play had the infield been back, but when the infield in, those balls are all base hits once you get them over the infield. That's why you got to always pitch down and keep the ball below the infield when you pitch down. Once you get it up around waist high, right, then that ball's automatically in the outfield. Even if you don't hit it hard, right? Even if you don't hit it hard, right? 0 and 1 on Shin Su Chu. Had a great year against the Royals last year. And he's into center field. This is more routine for Coco. Two down. Gorgeous night in Kansas City. 78 degrees. 713 first pitch. It was a three-minute light delay. Official time attempt presented by the parking spot. Easy to spot, easy to park. The parking spot at KCI. But enough sunlight where you want to bring a hat if that's what that is. Maybe shade the face. Although it was easy to tell from a lot of people whether they're involved with the Royals or maybe just your neighbor how much time they spent outside yesterday. There were a lot of red faces. You were out playing golf, as were a lot of the Royals. That was a beautiful day. Great day for golf. Great spring day. Mark DeRosa hitting it 242 in his first year with the Indians. Two balls, one strike. Taking over at third base, Casey Blake, who always seemed to play so well against the Royals, traded to the Dodgers last year, and the Indians. For about two years, tried to hand that position over to prospect Andy Marte, and it just never worked out. So the Indians had to go out and get a third baseman. It's two and two. Now DeRose has been one of those guys that he's played shortstop, second base, the outfield. He could probably play first base, and and now he finds himself settling with a regular job at third base. On the corner to get him looking. So Bannister gives up a leadoff double, but it doesn't turn into a big inning.
MI Bank Royals lineup. Changes in the middle with Mike Jacobs and Mark Tian hitting back to back. And Jacobs moving down a spot with the lefty Cliff Lee on the mound. David DeJesus hits in the number eight position. What was the last time he hit there? And Willie Bloomquist still in there as the forearm is still bothering Mike Avilas. And now the key is scouting report on Cliff Lee. Well, that, that number one there, Ryan, second lowest run support in AL. I uh, mean, 2.67 runs per game with a 1.43 ERA in his last six starts. Means that he's actually pitching great baseball and not getting any run support. Cliff Lee has made eight starts before tonight. And the Indians have scored a total of 22 runs in his eight starts. But if you take it a, a bit further, while he has been in the game, they've scored 16 runs. So they're scoring about two runs a game while he is still in there. Cabrera at shortstop and throws out Coco. One away. Defensively for the drive, Matt Laporta. First time we have seen him in left with Francisco and Chu. DeRosa, Cabrera, Luis Valbuena at second base. Victor Martinez at first. He and Kelly Shopik are going to be splitting the catching duties. And when Martinez isn't catching, he'll play first base, which isn't a big stretch for him. He was a shortstop when the Indians signed him out of Venezuela. Ball one on Alberto Cayaspo. Seven hits, four RBIs in the Baltimore series. He is eighth in the league with that 341 batting average. Cabrera again. Two down, and we welcome in Joel Goldberg. Well, guys, uh, nice off day for the Royals yesterday, and a lot of the players were playing in the Royals golf tournament yesterday out at the National, and actually the winning group ended up having a Royal in it. It was Mitch Meyer. His group was 14 under. Billy Butler came in third as he comes to the plate. He was 11 under. He wanted to make it clear that even though his good buddy Mitch won, he figured Mitch contributed about two shots. Billy says he contributed 10. I'm not sure how your group did. Mine was um, yeah, about one under. But I know Frank was the best dressed guy out there yesterday. Frank? <laughs> we're seven under. <laughs> oh, I guess you got us. I had Willie behind me taunting me the whole time, telling him that we're, we're too slow. <laughs> and then I had you in front of me with that sharp, well-dressed white hat outfit, and it was intimidating. <laughs> Going with the Calvin Pete look. Well, that's, that's where I got it from a long time ago, Calvin Pete. But actually, uh, Raw's trainer, Nick Schwartz, wears those hats all the time so when we're out, out in Frisco he said I said well take me to your hat shop and he there's this little hat shop on the corner and I went in bought three or four hats and that was it <laughs> two out single for Billy Butler who had a home run and five RBIs against the Orioles the runner at first with two down now you obviously were very happy with that particular drive Yes, I was. I mean, when you play into the camera, you cannot hit a bad shot. The one you don't want to do is hit that one that pops right up in front of you. <laughs> everybody knows that was a bad swing, but uh, it, it, I got it off the tee. And but I, I cannot tell you where it went after that because I went and I went right back to the camera. I was playing, playing it up to the camera. <laughs> so those are lost balls. Actually. I mean, that's not very Frank White like. <laughs> I mean, I think the only other time I've seen you on videotape pumping your arms in the air. You can just barely see it, just barely <laughs> see it. But on that final out of the 85 World Series on that fly ball to right, you can see number 20 jumping up and down at second base, realizing the World Series was about to be over. That was the weight of a whole year coming off <laughs> coming off your shoulders at one time. <laughs> one and one on Jose Guillen. He was on base nine times against Baltimore. With five hits, four walks. Driving in for. Hey Ryan, I don't think that it's so much uh, the excitement of playing well in golf yesterday. It is, as Frank mentioned, playing to the camera. And if you notice, that the cameraman rarely follows the ball, so you just got to sell it, celebrate a little bit, and everybody assumes you did well. Now my crew yesterday, my group wanted to know why we couldn't have the camera with us more often because two or three times the cameras there were the only two times I hit a good shot all day. <laughs> <laughs> got to sell it, right, Frank? You got to sell it for sure. <laughs> Sold me. Line to Francisco in center field. Royals are done in the first inning. Butler with a two-out single.
you call it presented by Sprint. If you like offensive strategy, which one do you like the best? Or which one do you think is most important? A, being able to hit and run. B, steal bases. C, bunts, moving runners. Or D, play for the big inning. So which one do you like best? Which one should the Royals be able to execute the best? Text 432-432, enter keyword Royals, followed by a space and your answer. Standard text rates apply as Tian cuts in front of Bloomquist and throws out Ben Francisco, one away in the second inning. Yeah, Ryan, I think right here, every shortstop has gone out there. Mark's gone over in front of them. They come too close together. They've screened each other off balls. They're going to have to, the shortstop's really going to have to start making an early call to get him off that ball if they really want it. Otherwise, they don't, they don't run the risk of running into each other or screening each other off of, of a ground ball. And that comes from uh, just playing together, communicating before the pitch, knowing that TN plays off further, so there's not much room to bloom with his right. So they need to uh, get that squared away pretty quickly. And again, it just underlines that, you know, we go on and on about how important it is for a second baseman and a shortstop to play together for a long time. And it's almost easy to forget about the other relationships, the third baseman and the shortstop, as you just described, or as you brought up on many occasions in your career, having a good relationship with your first baseman. Well, Mark plays off the bag, but he's got to have a lane. Now, he can't go back. You know, he's got to go at an angle uh, towards second base. If he goes back any, then now he's getting into the shortstop's lane, and I think that's where the problem is right now. He's going to his left, and he's going back at an angle towards shortstop rather than going in front of the shortstop and try to cut that ball off. This is Matt Laporta, a big prospect the Indians got last year when they traded CC Sabathia to the Brewers. No swing, says Daryl Cousins, the first base umpire. Say so you be the judge on that one there. No appeal needed there. Danny strikes out a second, two down in the second. Well, Benny does a great job after that high fastball up. He comes right back with a curveball that goes straight down, and, and that's an outstanding pitch right there. It just goes, to, in, in the scouts' term, it would be called 12 to 6, just straight down, and uh, that's a tough ball to stay on. To, to get up. You know, really, you want to stay above it, but on that one, you can't get under it, you're going to miss it. Now ball one on Kelly shopping. So two strikeouts for Brian Bannister. And the cutter hits the outside corner. Shopping last year getting a great opportunity with Victor Martinez out with elbow surgery. Played in 112 games and hit 21 home runs. But there's a burden that comes with that when you have a breakout season like Shopik did. Now everyone else is going to start paying a little more attention to you before a series begins. And he's off to a 2-10 start. Well, it's all a game of adjustments, and the faster you make them, the more successful you're going to be. And that fastball you got down the middle last year might be a slot or a curveball this year. And, and they're pitching him like he's a star versus a, a backup catcher who's just playing every now and then. Three balls, two strikes. Shopik, a former high round pick of the Boston Red Sox. They had big hopes for him, but ran into some arm troubles. And he hits that one hard into center field for a two out single. And up comes the number nine hitter, Luis Valbuena. Royals and Indians continue tomorrow night. Same time at 7:10. It'll be Gil Mesh against Fausto Carmona. Both pitchers off to a two and four start. Coverage begins at 6:30 with Royals live. First pitch at 7:10 in high definition on Fox Sports Kansas City. Luis Valbuena was not with the Indians. 
in the first two series between the two teams. Coming over during the offseason in a three way trade. With the Mets. The Mariners. And the Indians. He is just two for his first 19. Big bounce to Kiaspo. Scoreless second inning for Brian Bannister. You call it presented by Sprint so far. Royals fans would like to see more hit and run. 34% followed by more stolen bases. And right down the line, 27% bunning and moving runners. 10% playing for the big inning. So I, maybe that is a, a well educated group of fans so far, realizing that over the long haul, sitting back and waiting for the big inning, that's not the way this lineup was designed. Well, it's not designed, and I think they're looking at the fact that the Raws have hit into so many double plays already that maybe the hit and run might be a way to stay out of so many double plays. The last time the Royals played the Indians was in Cleveland, and they hit into six double plays in one game on a Tuesday night. With Aaron Laffey on the mound. Laffey is now pitching out of the bullpen as Jacobs hits one to the right side of second base, but because of the shift, that goes out into center field. So leadoff man on with Tian coming up. Well, this is the shift. You can see where the shortstop is in the second base when then Cliff Lee throws the 91 mile an hour fastball, and, and Jake just got it right back through the middle for a base hit. So one left hand bat does the job against Cliff Lee and now a left hand bat that has a. A long successful history against Cliff Lee. Taking strike one. Tian just three for 11 in the Baltimore series. Comes in tonight at 289. He did not swing and the count is one and one. 38 career at bats, 14 hits. That's 368. He has only struck out five times in those 38 at bats. And Lee trying to pitch him inside. It's two and one.
Cy Young winner last year, Cliff Lee. Also was the American League Comeback Player of the Year. People forget, and you and I were reminded today, that he was the Indians' number five starter last year. You sure, you sure wouldn't, wouldn't say it by the way, the type of year that he had. And uh, with Sabathia getting traded, he, he, he might have went to number one pretty quick. Mm -hmm. He was 22 and 3. The year before, he spent 10 games in the minor leagues. Three and two on Tian. He was among the Cy Young leaders as far as votes. Didn't win the award in 2005. He won 18 and five, and then a 14-game winner the next year. And then struggled in 07. Spent some time on the disabled list. All that time in the minor leagues, and then goes 22 and three last year. Still three and two on Tian. He did not get off to a good start this year had a couple of rough starts to begin the year but the Indians feel like right now and in his last six starts he is pitching just as good as he was last year. When you look at those numbers it tells it tells the whole story and he just waiting on his offense to give him some support and he's definitely keeps them in the ballgame and Tian again drives it against Cliff Lee this one's going to go to the fence. Jacob's going to be waved home by Dave Owen and he's going to make it to the plate to tie the game. Lee is right over the top, so he really didn't have a lot of deception for lefties. And Tian just took this fastball and drove it in the left center field. He didn't give any ground, and I think because he sees Cliff Lee so well, because he's right over the top, he doesn't have that lower three quarter. And then Mike Jacobs able to score all the way from first base. So nine doubles, 15 RBIs, and now Miguel Olivo. He has had. As difficult a time against Cliff Lee as Mark Tian has had success against Cliff Lee. Well, he's got that good tailing fastball, and if you don't track it, then you're going to try to, if you're trying to pull it, you're not going to get it done. Long run in for Francisco, and Tian is going to challenge Francisco to third base, and he's out. So Tian was trying to do his teammate a favor, and Get over to third base on a ball that really wasn't designed to get the runner from second to third. But well, if you see what Ben Francisco is, he's really just right behind second base. I think Tian was banking on the fact that he was going toward right field and he wouldn't be able to get turned around in time. But actually, the angle he was taking to get to the ball actually put him a lot closer uh, than Mark was able to realize. So that clears the bases and now. David De Jesus, five hits against the Orioles, three extra base hits. One of three left hand batters in the lineup tonight against Cliff Lee, who is tougher on left hand batters. But as you mentioned, he's pretty much over the top, so he's not deadly against the left handed batters. Jesus has had his troubles this year against the lefties. Well, I think if he threw three more curveballs to lefties, he'd be uh, he'd be a little more. Uh, he would be a lot have a lot more deception, but uh, with the fastball and it, it tails back into him, he tries to jam him with it, and they tried to get it on the outside corner. But if he, I guess, if he threw more curveballs to lefties, I think he'd have a lot more success. Two balls, two strikes. And like he did with Tian, Lee trying to pitch inside and jam the left hand batter. And when you throw fastballs in like that, Ryan, you really want to be able to do something with the next pitch. Either you're either going to set up a fastball in the outside corner, or a curveball in the outside corner, but if you stay in that zone right there, it just be a matter of whether or not you get it in there or not, whether you get hit. 
Boy, visiting teams have had a terrible time on that part of Kauffman Stadium, just like the Orioles did. To the third. Here's tonight's Roadrunner Turbo Speed Pitch comparison. Cliffley at 94, Brian Bannister at 91. You can double your speed with Roadrunner Turbo from Time Warner Cable. As Drupal Cabrera doubled on the second pitch of the game against Bannister. And then with one out, scored on a Victor Martinez single. Cutter over the inside makes it one and one. Butler behind the bag to the bag one away. Well it's a, a warm night in Kansas City and something we'll have to keep an eye on in regard to Brian Bannister remember his last start against Oakland on Wednesday his shoulders stiffened up on him. Well I mean he, he was throwing a lot of cutters and you know that. When you throw a lot of breaking balls, cutters to curveballs, sometimes that'll get the shoulder a little bit stiff. So hopefully this warm weather will be good for him tonight. Outside to Sizemore, who flied out to the warning track in center field in the first inning. Bannister wasn't giving the A's anything in the first five innings. And they looked like they had no chance against him, and the Royals had a an early one to nothing lead, but then he started getting the ball up. In the sixth, and was eight, only able to go five and two thirds innings. When he left the game, it was two to one Oakland. Then a five run seventh inning, it was seven to one Oakland, and the Royals ended up losing seven two. You know, a lot of times you get a pitcher that's in good rhythm. He's get the ball. He works fast. He's throwing strikes, and he's getting a lot of outs. What you don't see a lot from the hitters today is you don't see a lot of hitters trying to break the pitcher's rhythm. You know, you don't see a lot of hitters just as the pitcher start to wind up, step out, call timeout, just to do something to kind of get him off rhythm. And, and that, that's one thing I've noticed that doesn't happen very much today. Bannister's third strikeout two down in the third inning switch hitting Victor Martinez coming up in tonight's league leaders brought to you by your Kansas City area Toyota dealers top averages by switch hitters Martinez 401 that was coming into the game he's now at 405 Christian Guzman has had a good start for the Nationals he's also spent time on the disabled list and then a series of guys with Royals connections a former Royal a current Royal and a 
Wish he was a royal. <laughs> Almost was a royal. <laughs> Alberto Cayaspo at the moment is playing in shallow right field against Victor Martinez. Who hit a single to left with the infield in. In the first inning. Driving in Cabrera. So Martinez base hit to left in the first but the Royals think he's going to try and pull the ball. Tian all by himself on the left side. One two three third inning for Brian Bannister. Going to graduate from Pembroke High School this month. She's been a volunteer buddy for the YMCA Challenger program for the past three years. Also dedicating hours and energy as a YMCA coach and a member of the YMCA Challenger Advisory Board. So welcome to Rebecca sitting in the Buck O'Neill Legacy seat at tonight's game. And remember fans, don't forget to nominate others who make a difference in our community for the All-Stars Among Us promotion. Sending one worthy Royals fan to St. Louis for the 2009 All-Star Game. Fans can visit Royals.com slash community to submit nominations. Two pitches, one down as Bloomquist grounds out to Cabrera. Cabrera has handled three ground balls first time through the order beginning with Coco Crisp who steps in now 0 for 1. Both teams one run three hits Victor Martinez driving in Cabrera in the first Mark Tian getting Mike Jacobs home in the second. Oh and one on Coco. Yeah, Cliff Lee will sink his fastball and that's where the ground balls come from and I mean he's got a, he's got a great assortment of pitches and the thing that he does he, he really attacks the strike zone he's right around the plate all the time. Hit hard to left field, but right at Matt Laporta. So four pitches and two outs in the third inning. As part of the Royals salute to the Negro Leagues coming up on Saturday, May the 30th, you can get a replica Monarchs jersey from Pepsi that's available to the first 20,000 fans. It'll be the Royals and the White Sox on May the 30th. Tickets at 1 800 6 Royals, Royals.com. Stadium box office or area high V food stores. Alberto Cayasco also grounded out to short his first time up.
Frank to add to your point Lee is not one of those flame throwing guys but that doesn't result in him shying away from his fastball he throws mostly fastballs he really does he, try, he can get up to 94 but he, he cuts it and make, makes it sink and he'll make a tail from right hander so it's not always a straight fastball when he goes inside to left does he try to run it in on the hand and try to try to jam it? he also does something that I think more pitchers did in your era than they do now and that is change speeds on the fastball and then they really and, and, and that's one of those things that you don't you don't have to tell the catcher about you know as long as he knows it's a fastball as long as it's not a, all the way down to a changeup, that really helps him that is right on the chalk and towards the left field corner played very well by Chu who has a great arm and shows it off Kiaspo tried to slide into left field to get around the tag Three batters come to the plate in the third. Royals baseball brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. And by AT&T, switch to the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. The Royals have made a couple of outs on the bases tonight. Alberto Kiaspo challenging Shin Su Chu's arm, who leads off. Shinsu Chu coming off Tommy John surgery, normally a surgery for a pitcher, but a couple of years ago he had that ligament transplant on his elbow, but has come back from that and still has a pretty good arm. Well, we, we can see by that, that that the surgery was a success. Three and one. Flight out to center field in the first inning against Brian Bannister. And he has struck out three. That's hit hard to right. And Guillen is there. One away, and now Mark DeRosa. This week on Fox Saturday Baseball, interleague play begins as Ryan Howard and the defending World Series champion Phillies make their first trip to New Yankee Stadium to take on Derek Jeter and the Yankees. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week at 3 p.m. on Fox. Up the middle for Willie Bloomquist. Mark DeRose is out. Two quick outs for Bannister, who has retired six in a row. And nine of his last ten. Efficient night so far. His best inning 
the third with 12, but he might best that here in the fourth as he deals to Ben Francisco. He doesn't have a lot of hits against the Royals this year, but he has hit some balls hard. Especially when you leave him from the middle end. He can really turn on that fastball and have more trouble away. But Banny's done a good job late of late and like this is getting ground balls. And I think that's because of the cutter, the ball going from the fat part of the bat to the end of the bat, and it's creating some ground balls for him. One and two to Francisco, who rolled out to Tian in the second inning. This is that cutter that this ball goes down and it looks like it's middle where Francisco likes it and that's a tough pitch to hit right there if, you, if you're trying to pull the ball. Brian has not issued a walk yet. The Indians will walk. They have the second most in the American League. And there's the first. So that's a stat to keep an eye on because the Indians have not hit the way everyone expected they would hit. So this is especially a team that you want them to earn their base runners because really the only thing they have going for them on offense is all the walks. Well the walk anytime you get a free base and you have a hitters with the ability to drive the ball in the alleys that, that's almost like an automatic run without without even getting a base hit. And now Matt Laporta. Seven stolen bases for Ben Francisco. The Indians do have some speed in their lineup. They are fourth in the American League with 27 steals. A little closer this time. It's all about the tag here. And just a little high on the right shoulder. So a little shorter lead for Francisco. And Laporta swings and misses. And now Oliva. Boy, what did Francisco do to upset the Royals? <laughs> Everyone wants to throw him out. I think they looked at those seven stolen bases and one caught still, and that might be enough right there. think this would not be a running situation because you have a a guy who can go deep at the plate and Matt Laporta and wouldn't be a great guy to lead off the next inning. And again maybe if Francisco can get the second you can get the rookie thinking single rather than extra base hit. Well I think if he runs or not he's pretty much accomplished his goal at first base he's got the catcher thinking about him that that can affect your pitch call. He's also got Bannister thinking about him, which can affect his concentration in delivering the pitch. Not running. And Laporta just reaches out and bloops it into right center. Coco on the move, doesn't get it. Guillen fields deep. Chance for a play at the plate. Royals need a good throw, and it's high. Well, Guillen hit Kiaspo, which made it a long, long throw for the cutoff man. Well, that's true. They're not used to throwing that far, but they actually made a nice throw from out there. But Francisco, with his speed, just kept going. Coco dove for it. Guillen made a, did a good job. But the big thing here is two outs. You know, he's running all the way, and that's why that's why he scores on this play. It's one of the plays where every outfielder when you when you make a dive in a long run you expect to catch that ball. Now Shopik cranks it to center playable for Coco. Indians take the lead on Laporta's single scoring Francisco.
fourth inning. Don't forget from Rivals Sports Bar out in right field. After the game, it's Boulevard Royals Live with Joel Goldberg and Jamie Quirk. Brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company, Kansas City's Beer. And nice crowd on a beautiful Tuesday night following an off day. It is T-shirt Tuesday and AT&T giving out George Brett T-shirts tonight, so a lot of blue in the ballpark. The Royals down by one. Billy Butler, Jose Guillen, and Mike Jacobs, who all had good swings against Lee first time through. Butler singled. Guillen lined to center. And Jacobs singled and came around to score the Royals run. It's 2-0 and on Billy. Out of play. Cliff Lee has used his defense in the first three innings. No walks, no strikeouts. He has gotten one double play. Two balls, two strikes. Cliff Lee took the loss against Brian Bannister and the Royals on April the 22nd, but pitched well. Eight innings, gave up just two runs. He was 5 and 0 against the Royals last year, winning the Cy Young. Down goes Butler on Lee's first strikeout, and let's find Joel Goldberg. Brian Frank, we're always hanging out at Rivals. We haven't tried the food yet, and you know I like to do that. The monster chicken nachos. They got pulled chicken in here, and the cheese, and the peppers, and the pico, and the beans. Too much for one person. It could feed a family of five. So we got Patrick, and we got Kale, and we got Ryan, and we got Adam. Dig in, guys. Let's try this out. We're all going to enjoy this. These guys are in the small kids' chairs, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. Pretty good. Hey, if you're looking for anybody on the crew, they're right here eating the chicken nachos. Back upstairs to you. <laughs> all right, Joel. One out single for Jose Guillen. Joel seems to find the food, doesn't he? <laughs> still, still only me. <laughs> well, Ryan, I really love the way Jose does this. I mean, those lefties throw the ball down and into him, and he really can get inside of that ball and, and, and get it solid. He doesn't hit around many balls. He can get those, pull those hands in and get the fat part of the bat on that ball, and it just, I mean, he just has a lot of success on that pitch right there. Mike Jacobs singled leading off the second inning. Scored on Mark Tian's double. In the dirt, Guillen not going anywhere. Jacobs leading the Royals with eight home runs. And Cliff Lee has only given up three in 57 innings. One and one. Yeah, Mike Jacobs would be pretty much the opposite of of David Day Zeus and Mark T and to Cliff Lee. Cliff Lee will try to come in off the plate, but he would be the hitter in the lineup, the left hander that he would go away with, maybe with the curveball or the fastball. Shopik wants something outside. It's over the plate. But it's down in the strike zone. Jacobs thought it was down and out of the strike zone. One and two. Well, he wants to go away with a slaughter, and, and it just goes to the outer half of the plate. The way he caught it, it gave it appearances it was down. But he's one of those pitches that Mike Jacobs is going to make himself go out over the plate and try to drive the ball to left center field. Strikeout number two. Well, start your summer off right by spending Memorial Day at Kauffman Stadium. You can enjoy $5 upper level tickets as part of a Royal Night and dollar concessions as part of Independence Honda Buck Night. So Memorial Day, which is next Monday against the Tigers at 110. Great deals at Kauffman Stadium. Tian drives it again to left center, but this one's slicing towards Laporta. 
that's the inning. The end of four, two to one Cleveland. This is exactly what we thought we'd see tonight with Brian Bannister and Cliff Lee not a whole lot of runs. Well, and the, the, the records really indicate this is the kind of game was gonna, we we're going to have. And, you know, so far the Rawls have had a couple of missed opportunities on the bases, but but they are in this game, and Banning's doing everything he can to keep them in this game, and Cliff Lee is doing what he's been doing the last six starts. Laporta and Martinez has driven in the Cleveland runs. Tian for the Royals. Balbuena lays down a bunt and Tian's throw is wide. So Balbuena one for two and that bunt single snapped an 0 for 10. So if you're not swinging it well find another way to get on base. Well that's when the imagination has to come out. I mean you can't just keep going up here swinging and, and keep hitting out hitting ground ball outs or fly ball outs or striking out. You got to try to open the game up. If you got speed then you might as well take advantage of it and, and look for opportunities to change the game around a little bit. Been a frustrating year for Eric Wedge, his seventh year as manager of the Indians, picked by many to win the division. And now Cabrera lays down a bunt. Bannister will play this one, and that's low and takes Butler off the bag. So Cabrera is two out of three. But this is really not uh, this is smart baseball right here. Vanny's cruising along and working at a good pace and uh, Cliff Lee's pitching well in a close ball game and they said well let's just change the game around a little bit. So Valbuena gets a, a bunt base hit and what can, what's the worst can happen here is you got a man on second base with one out. Well, it appeared that Daryl Cousins was. Referring to maybe Butler coming off the bag on that throw from Brian Bannister, but at the very end here, the foot stayed on the bag, and looks like Cabrera was out. Well, you probably, you would probably, Billy would probably been better served if he had his right foot on the bag, and that would have given him a little more reach to the inside part of the with the diamond. With the left foot, it's kind of hard to. Uh, to, to, to really reach across your body that way. I believe that is the only umpire in Major League history that has ejected Frank White from a Major League Baseball game. <laughs> true <laughs> or false? That's true. I'm not going to talk about that one. <laughs> that wasn't very pretty. <laughs> Butler on the bag. Down to second. They've got Cabrera in a rundown. Have to keep an eye on Valbuena. Now Valbuena to the plate. Kiaspo's got him after a collision.
fans are all over Valbuena for bowling over Miguel Olivo, but that's what happens when you stand in front of the plate. Well, I mean, that he, he gave him nowhere to go, and that's what he had to do in that situation. So uh, that's good hard nosed baseball right there. Well, and if that looked bad that he went in high. The goal is to jar the ball loose. So if the ball is high, that's what you're trying to do is knock the ball out of the glove, right? Well, what base runners won't do is if the catcher's got home plate blocked, they're not going to go in feet first and have the catcher cramp down on them, and they're not going to come in head first and let the, let the uh, catcher come down on them. So Miguel squared up to him, and once the catcher squares up to you, then you don't have anything left to do but to try to unlock, dislodge the ball from his hand. And now ground ball to the right side. Two on, nobody out. And the Indians get nothing. about the collision with Luis Valbuena which resulted in Olivo landing on his back but Valbuena hasn't come out of the dugout yet apparently he cut his chin on that collision so we'll wait for him to take the field let's talk more about that play with former Royals catcher and Royals live co-host Jamie Quirk Quir Jamie that's not a dirty play is it not at all and Frank was right the way uh, Miguel squared up on that he's anticipating a collision and that's just what he got so he can't be upset with being bowled over like that because he went ahead and took home plate away and was almost inviting a collision but he was expecting one too and he got one. And now he's getting booed as he takes the field. You know I, we were saying during the break Jamie that. You know if Valbuena doesn't go in and create a collision. Olivo could very easily tag him high like he did Russell Brannion last homestand and then he's the one that takes the brunt of the collision. Absolutely. I mean uh, the base runner like Frank said is trying to dislodge the ball. The ball was up around his chest so that's where he went to try to dislodge the ball and the base runner had no other uh, no other place to go but there. Jamie what do you think Eric Wedge would have said if uh, Bob Bueno had just stopped and say here tag me. Yeah, he probably he would have been real late getting back to second base because he'd been <laughs> taken out of the game. <laughs> like maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think fans have really gotten used to guys giving up. Uh, guys giving up on that ball between first and second. You know, the second baseman comes in, they just let him tag him and get the double play. And and I think whenever you see the way the game is supposed to be played, it, it's almost like it's a shock to everybody. Yeah, they think it's a dirty play, and it, and it isn't. It's it's hard baseball. It's proper baseball. There's no cleats flying or anything like that. He tried to dislodge the ball and 
He was out. One and one on Miguel, who was part of that odd double play in the top of the fifth inning, and he was part of a double play in the second. With Tian at second base and nobody out, flight out to shallow center field. Tian Gamble tried to take third, and Ben Francisco threw him out. And that's past Cabrera and into left field. So down in the count, one and two. And we've seen this at times, Frank. Olivo with some big wild swings early in the count, but with two strikes shortening up a bit. Well, that's why I say he probably just tells himself, okay, I'm going to give it one shot and, and we'll see where it goes. But then with two strikes, he sits on this change up and, and really stays with it and drives the line drive in the left in the left field. You know what the Royals and Indians playing each other reminds me. Of a story of 1999 you were on this coaching staff the Royals were in Cleveland. And. Charles Nagy was. Pitching for the Indians. The Jesus showing bunt. And Mike Sweeney. Was having some success as a two strike hitter because he would widen out his stance. And Lamar Johnson who was the batting coach at the time said you know Michael you're strong enough to still hit for power with your two strike stance. If that's your best balance. And that's your best approach. Go to the plate with your two strike approach. You're still going to hit your home runs. And that really turned his career around. And Miguel Olivo kind of falls in that mode. I mean, his two strike approach, he is still plenty strong to drive the ball. It's just got to be convinced. I can still see line drives off Mike's batter going in the right center field, left center field with two strikes. And, and he was one of the best two strike hitters in the game. De Jesus. Fouled out to the catcher in the second inning. And getting a bunt down. Back to Lee, but not hard enough. And then Victor Martinez nearly didn't have his foot on the bag. But the Jesus is out. He gets the job done. And Olivo moves up to second base. Yeah, when a second baseman's got to come all the way over and, and try to take a throw, or first baseman's taking a throw from a pitcher, the one thing you don't want him to do is throw the ball across the line like like he did right there. You want to keep the ball on the inside part of the bag. And if David had been a little faster, it could have been a pretty nice collision at first base. There's a few words there between Olivo and Valbuena, but I think that was more of a okay. I you think, know, we're, we're okay. I mean, I think in the, in the heat of the, the collision, I think Ali was, a, you know, he's an aggressive guy anyway. And uh, I think he wanted to get up to make sure that there wasn't going to be anything from the other side. But I think he just told him, hey, nice play. Way to go. And now Bloomquist into right center. Long run Francisco makes the catch. Olivo has plenty of time to tag up and advance to third. So Bloomquist is 0 for 2, tying runner at third. And now Coco Crisp. Hey, fans, the next Ivy Pepsi Fireworks is Friday, May the 29th. The Royals will be hosting the White Sox at 710. Fireworks after the game. 1 800 6 Royals, Royals.com, the stadium box offices, and area Ivy food stores. Coco for the shortstop Cabrera. And that's the inning. Leadoff single, sack bunt. The Royals unable to get Olivo to the plate.
Bannister has given up two runs, six hits. Here's his pitch count brought to you by James B. Nutter and company. Coming off a six pitch fifth inning. Banny has walked only one and struck out three. So in good shape with 64 pitches through five innings. He threw 86 when he came out of the game early on Wednesday at Oakland with the stiff right shoulder, but looks good tonight. This was the inning that he got into trouble. The sixth inning when he was in Oakland. Of course, a much different outing because when he entered that uh, sixth inning, he had given up no runs. He had given up a whole bunch of nothing. Shin Su Chu is fly to center, line to right. Two and one on Chu. Mark DeRosa will follow, then Ben Francisco. The Indians' first four hitters, either left handed or switch hitters. And lefties have had a lot more luck against Brian Bannister. They don't have necessarily a great number against Banny. Hitting at 278, but right handers have had an awful time against Brian Bannister. That's a shot into center field. So the seventh hit for the tribe. Shin Su choose first. And up comes Mark DeRosa. Here's the Coors Light freeze camp. And as we go back to that collision at home plate in the fifth inning, Luis Valbuena and Miguel Olivo. Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Olivo lost his helmet and his mask, but it appears that Valbuena was cut below the lip. Yeah, that was up around the mask. He probably got got a piece of the mask in his face right there, but that's why catchers never take their mask off when they when they hit when they see a collision coming. You know, getting back to what you said about lefties versus Banning, mainly because everything's coming into the lefty. And if the cutter doesn't uh, have the sharp break, if the curveball or slider doesn't have the sharp break where it comes in off the plate, then it's really down in that swing zone of the left hander, which is kind of down and, and just a little bit out over the plate. Look at the righties, though. 145. <laughs> That's the slider on the corner <laughs> and that cutter on the corner right there. Two and one on DeRosa. Strikeout and a ground out tonight. Well, he, he's mixing it up pretty good, though. I, when you're pitching both sides of the plate and you're sinking your ball and you're cutting it, and you know, I can see why it'd be tough on right handers because you just really don't have anything to focus on. And, and the key thing is, is not only having all those pitches, but being able to throw them for strikes. Chu is six out of six in stolen base attempts. Up the middle. Gets through Kiaspo and Bloomquist, and the Indians will have runners at the corners and nobody out. They got the ground ball. Wasn't necessarily well hit, but very well placed. And DeRosa's one for three. If you want to get a base hit up the middle, is where it's going to be. Everybody's kind of spread away, and they're playing in for the double play, and everybody's ground gets kind of cut down. Kaspo made a great effort going on the other side, trying to knock it down, but just wasn't successful. That Chu just reading the ball going through those two guys. He just kept going. Last inning the Indians had runners at first and second nobody out and didn't score. A little low to Francisco. Walked with two outs in the fourth inning. And then scored on Matt Laporta's. Single to right center, a bloop. And Francisco scoring all the way from first base. To Tian. Royals will take two. And they get it. A run scores. So it's three to one Cleveland, but the Royals get two outs on the play and their second double play in the last two innings.
uh, you really hate to give a run away in this situation uh, because of the way Cliff Lee's throwing, but with no outs, you better off to take the two outs and try to get out of the inning and give up the one run. So they're clear now for Laporta. Near the line and slicing long run for Guillen. And it drops foul. Let's do a little scoreboard watching and big night for the Detroit Tigers as they beat the Texas Rangers four to nothing in Detroit. Dontrell Willis giving up just one hit in eight innings. So good for him. Yeah, that, that's a great success story there. That's that's a great comeback game right there. So the Tigers at the moment a game and a half up on the Royals and now the Royals are down three to one. In the sixth inning. And that hits Laporta. Who did everything he could to get his left elbow out of the way. Everything humanly possible. And the two seamen that have kept running in and. Most <laughs> most guys would have. They learned that in college. <laughs> That's what call taking one for the team. Rossi Ramirez just starting to loosen up. And now Kelly Shopik, speaking of hit batters, Shopik knows all about that. He's been plunked eight times. That's the most in the American League. And the Cleveland Indians, by the way, lead the league in hit batters. 26. Now that Laporte has been hit last year they set a franchise record they were hit 103 times. So it wasn't just Laporta who learned that in college. <laughs> I'll tell you other guys. <laughs> Either they can't see the ball or they're not trying. <laughs> That's a lot of times to get hit a lot of times to get hit. I think oh, it's three and I think a lot of it too, Ryan, is more pitches pitch away, and it, and it kind of takes some of the some of the hitters out there, their eyesight's out over the plate, and and they very rarely get pitched inside, and when pitches do come inside, a lot of them don't really perfect it, and that's when the guys get hit because they're mostly thinking you're going to get them out of the way. Well, it's a good way to save a plate appearance too, if you have two strikes on you, pitch inside. Take one off the elbow, you get on base, and you don't lose in that bat. Well, you don't want to take it off the elbow itself, but <laughs> there's certain places you don't want to get hit. Now it's three and two. They, they always say shoulder to the to the top of the head, fingertips to the elbow, and knee to the ankle. <laughs> you don't want to get hit over there. Not enough meat in those areas. <laughs> and you have to be careful because. If you get a reputation at this level of leaning out over the plate, there are some pitchers that'll say, "Oh, you want to get hit? Well, let me help you." <laughs> you want to get on that bat here? Take this. <laughs> Laporta runs, and that's blasted into deep left center. Coco didn't see it for a moment. Now at the fence, it's a two-run home run and a five-to-one Indians lead. Sixth inning. And Brian Bannister, who has been so good against the Indians, has given up nine hits in less than six innings. He left this pitch out over the plate and it really middle in. And Shopik really hit it well. Hit it so high, Coco really didn't see it until it actually went over the fence. Oh, and two on Valbuena. Grounded out in the second. Bunt single in the fifth, and then had that collision with Miguel Olivo. Had a nice cut below his lip. Sometimes in between innings, the doctor can run down there and do a quick stitch job, but I think you have a few hours between a cut. 
and when you need stitches so maybe he can get that done after the game if he hasn't already. Three run six shopping gets a two run home run. And this is our Sonic Slam inning. And our contestant is Teresa Baker from Belton, Missouri. If the Raws hit a home run this inning, Teresa will win $600. But if the Raws hit a grand slam out of the park, Teresa will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. The Royals down by four to a pitcher who is throwing. Very well tonight and has been over his last seven starts. Kiaspo is singled and grounded out. Tried to stretch his single into a double and was thrown out by Shinsu Chu back in the third inning. The Royals tied the game at one in the second. Mark Tian's double scored Mike Jacobs, but then Tian was at second with nobody out. Tried to advance on a Shallow fly ball from Miguel Olivo and was thrown out for a double play. The Royals have had a single in each of the last three innings. They got a leadoff single from Olivo in the fifth. De Jesus bunted him to second. Bloomquist fly out, got him to third, but Lee got out of it on a ground ball from Coco Crisp. And Lee will give up some hits. He has given up 69 hits in 59 innings. So several more hits than innings pitch. The league hitting about 290 to 300 against him. But he doesn't walk hardly anyone. Doesn't give up hardly any home runs. Yeah, just being able to eliminate those big innings. Uh, sinking that fastball, getting his ground balls, and, and getting his team off the field. And only 62 pitches in five plus innings. Our next broadcast in high definition is coming up tomorrow with Gil Mesh against Fosto Carmona. Coverage beginning at 6:30. First pitch 7:10. Brought to you by Time Warner Cable, where HD is free with digital cable. Three balls, two strikes to Kiaspo. Lined into right field, but look at Shin Su Chu. You know what that was right there, Frank? 
Shinsu Chu has a premium subscription to MLB.tv, and he fast-forwarded live TV, and he knew where that ball was going to be, so he set up there. <laughs> well, now, now we can rewind live TV, and we can see <laughs> Lee left the fastball up, and Kiaspa really did a good job getting on top of it in the line drive, but he was played perfectly in right field by two. Want to know to Billy singled in the first struck out in the fourth. Two and oh. That ball was hit hard and Lee had fallen behind two and oh then it was three and two now two and oh on Butler so. This might be an opportunity here for the Royals to do something to get. Back into the game and get into the Cleveland bullpen. And Billy hits that hard into right center. Francisco chasing, and it's going to be off the fence. So there you go. Two good swings against Lee in the sixth inning, and Guillen coming up. Well, Billy does a great job, 2 0, getting the pitch that he can handle, which is his driving area is right center, center to left center. He got a pitch out over the plate and really stayed behind it. He does a great job keeping his head down and getting through that ball. All he needed was a few more feet. He'd have been trotting around those bases. Jose Guillen, too good at bats. He is lined to center, single to left. He's done well against Lee in his career. 0 and 1 on a fastball at 92. 391 with runners in scoring position. Let's see a hitter like Jose take a fastball right down the middle of the first pitch. That means he was looking for something off speed. In a shallow left center, long run Laporta diving and he doesn't get it. And now Francisco kicks it around. So Butler on his way to the plate. It's a five to two game. Well, we see Jose take that fastball first pitch and make no move. So it looks like to me that's the guy that's looking for a breaking ball. And here he gets a slider. Gets up, gets up on the high end of the bat, but is able to soft serve it out in the left center field. That'll be a single and an air charge to Francisco, so no RBI. That one little kick allowed Butler to score. He was prepared to stop at third, and it allowed Guillen to move into scoring position for Mike Jacobs. Jacobs singled leading off the second and scored and then struck out in the fourth. Go and Lee throws out Jacobs. Guillen moves over to third. Hey fans, want to remind you about the Bob Evans bases loaded four pack. It's a complete package. It's every Friday and Sunday game. You'll get four Royals tickets. Each ticket has ten dollars that you can use towards anything in the ballpark: merchandise, concessions. All that for just 60 bucks and then stay after the game on Sundays to run the bases in the sprint fun run. So next time you're getting Royals tickets ask about the Bob Evans bases loaded four pack. Now ball one to ten they've changed the scoring. On the. Guillen. Base hit to right. Give him an RBI now. No error. So 
Well, Butler scores on the single. Tien towards center. Cabrera runs it down. The Royals get one in the six to make it a three run game. Indians breaking out with five runs in six innings against Brian Bannister, who was four and one with a great ERA against Cleveland coming in tonight. And the bottom of the order getting it done for Cleveland. Royals getting RBIs from Mark Tien and Jose Guillen against Cliff Lee. And down by three as we go to the seventh inning. Horacio Ramirez. Comes on for the 12th time. Given up 19 hits in 13 and two thirds innings. So the league is hitting 328 against him coming in tonight. And he'll get the top of the order. So six innings for Brian Bannister, allowing five runs on nine hits. His career ERA against Cleveland coming in tonight 1.62. Cabrera switch hitter moves over to the right side. Two hits so far tonight. And he has scored one of the five runs. And Ramirez jumps ahead quickly. It's 0 and 2. Cabrera doubled and scored the first run in the first on a Martinez single. Slicing towards right center, but Coco has a read and makes the play. Now Grady Sizemore, who's 0 for 3, struck out against Brian Bannister in the third inning, and that's tonight's Arby's pitch by pitch. He's done it. Sizemore off with a curveball, and he came back with a fastball down the middle. Sinker down low. Cutter inside that he fouled it off. And then another break breaking ball up out of this one through. So Grady Sizemore is hitting 216. This is game number 40 for the Indians tonight, number 39 for the Royals. And 40 marks the one quarter point of the season. So we are officially not. In that part of the year where you say, well, it's still early. And now he's 0 for 4 after a pop up to Bloomquist. So two down for Victor Martinez, who has driven in a run tonight, one for three. And here's tonight's Firestone leaderboard. Batting average leaders. One and zero from Ramirez. 
62 hits for Victor Martinez, the most in the American League. Alberto Cayaspo coming in eighth. And Cayaspo is one out of three. Two and one. Victor Martinez, like almost every kid growing up in Venezuela, wanted to be a shortstop. He wanted to be the next Ozzy Guillen. Remember, for a while, he wanted to be the next Louis Aparicio or Dave Concepcion, Chico Carrascal, but he wanted to be the next Ozzy Guillen. The Indians signed him and told them they wanted to make him a catcher, and he was absolutely crushed. And was thinking about quitting. But as the story goes, his father passed away at age 34, so his mom raised Victor and his siblings all by herself, working several jobs. And she told Victor, There is no way you are going to quit. And it's a good decision that he did. Well, see, I don't think mom has to work anymore. <laughs> I tell you, you know, when you when your mom works that hard and, and she lays down the law like that, then you almost have to go and, and try to get it done. But you, you have a lot of players who go through the minor leagues wanting to be this player and that player, play this position. That I mean, I always wanted to play shortstop. But when I got to the big leagues, it was about where's my opportunity to stay here, and that's why I went to second base. So that's the whole thing about getting to the major league and staying in the major leagues is not, not so much what position you play. Oh, and one on. Shinsu Chu is one out of three. Scored in the Indians' biggest inning, a three run sixth. Chu coming home on a double playground out, and then Kelly Shopik hit a two run home run. It's 0 and 2. Similar story for Brandon Inge of Detroit. He was an infielder in college, they made him a catcher. Jorge Posada, the Yankees dreamed of being a shortstop, but Derek Jeter was in his way. All those guys turned out to be pretty good catchers in Inge's case for a little while. Mitch Meyer was a catcher in college and very briefly as a professional, then moved to third base, then to the corner outfield, then to center field. Now he's in the big leagues. Shallow left. And De Jesus brings it down. It's a scoreless seventh inning for Horacio Ramirez. City and now Royals coming up with 
Miguel Olivo, David DeJesus, and Willie Bloomquist in the bottom of the seventh inning. And Olivo one for two. Flied into a double play in the second inning and then singled in the fifth. Oh and two no walks two strikeouts for Cliff Lee. He's given up eight hits. In his first six innings. But he has a. Double play behind him. The Royals have. Stranded four. Let's take a look at some other scores. On the Panera Bread. Scoreboard the Yankees. Have won seven in a row. Another home run for Alex Rodriguez. The Tigers win their fourth in a row. Dontrell Willis allowing just one hit tonight. Oakland and Tampa Bay, no score into extra innings. Oakland has lost four going into that one. Tampa Bay has won four in a row. Tampa Bay just took three out of four from the Indians. The Indians, like the Royals, had the day off yesterday. Two balls, two strikes. Great job tonight so far of damage control by Cliff Lee. He's given up at least one hit in every inning. And in the second and sixth innings, he's given up more than one hit, but only one run in the second and one run in the sixth. Still two and two. Let's look at more American League scores on the Panera scoreboard. Tim Wakefield wins his fifth. That snaps Toronto's four game winning streak. Chicago in front of Minnesota. The White Sox lost five in a row. Los Angeles is at Seattle. The Angels with a chance to pick up a game on Texas. They had their seven game winning streak snapped in the loss at Detroit. Third strikeout for Cliff Lee. So one away and let's take a look again at you call it presented by Sprint. We asked you. What do you feel? Is the best offensive strategy or the one that the Royals need to have as close to perfected this year. And still. 35 percent for hit and run but. Bunts and moving runners has passed. Stolen bases since we last check and. That is somewhat of a factor tonight because the Royals tied the game at one in the second inning and had T in at second base with nobody out. And didn't get him home. In the fifth inning Miguel Olivo singled De Jesus bunted him to second. And the Royals were unable to get. Olivo home. So keep voting we'll check it again. 4 3 2 4 3 2. Keyword Royals followed by a space and your answer. A hit and run B stolen bases C bunts and moving runners or D playing for the big inning. Well, the one thing that Cliff Lee's done well tonight, Ryan, is uh, like you said early, minimize damage. And when you, in the course of a game, regardless of how well you're pitching or the other pitchers pitching, there are going to be one or two opportunities for the other team to score. And it's how well you handle that opportunity that makes a difference. And where Banny had a tough sixth inning, Cliff Lee was able to make the pitch and get himself out of trouble and off the field. Curveball hanging a little high. Three of the five runs for Cleveland coming with two outs tonight. Matt Laporta in left field. Two outs in the seventh inning. 
Royals winding down a homestand against the Cleveland Indians. And now here's what's on tap brought to you by Bud Light Lime. Tomorrow night, Thursday afternoon against Cleveland, and a glimpse of interleague play. Next weekend, the Royals will be in St. Louis. And then after that, the homestand against more Central Division teams with the Tigers and the White Sox coming to Kauffman Stadium. Willie Bloomquist is grounded out and flied out to deep center field. This has not been a good matchup for him in his career. But the one thing that Lee's done with Willie Bloom, because he's really gone after him with fastballs, and some, some maybe it's something he knows about Willie. He can throw the telling fastball and and, and get him out. He's not really going with a lot of different pitches. He's mainly staying with the fastball. Her ball is hit on the ground to Cabrera, who has been busy and he has been perfect. Royals down in order in the seventh. Baseball brought to you tonight by Bud Light Lime, the drinkability of Bud Light with the refreshing taste of lime. And by Colorado Tourism, plan your summer vacation at Colorado.com. Mark DeRosa will lead off against Horacio Ramirez, who took over in the seventh. Brian Bannister gave up all five of the runs. Ramirez pitching a scoreless seventh, working around a walk. DeRosa is one out of three with a single tonight. Good play by Ramirez. Heads towards first, gets it to Butler, one away. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Kansas City Royals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre, Frank White, Joel Goldberg at Compton Stadium. David De Jesus retiring Ben Francisco 0 for 3 tonight where the run scored on a walk. So Ramirez is face six retired five bringing up Matt Laporta.
Laporta struck out in the second inning, and that made him 0 for his last 11. And his batting average down around 190. But then an RBI single in the fourth, hit by a pitch, and scored on the Shopik home run in the sixth. Moving his average up to 212. Got his first major league hit earlier this month against Toronto, a home run. It wasn't his first major league at bat, but his first major league hit off of Toronto's Brian Tallett. What was your first big league hit? Oh, my first big league hit was against Dahl Alexander with Baltimore. It was a little blooper in the right center field. Uh, they, my first major league home run was against Tom Bergman. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we beat Minnesota something like 20 to 3 that day or something like that. I think it was like the 20th run of the game coming coming out coming out off the bench and, and hitting the home run. So Bergie probably can remember the first time he struck me out too. <laughs> <laughs> Bergie now the pitching coach at AAA Omaha. Former Royals bullpen coach. I remember when he got hit on his bicycle. Remember, he used to ride his bike from Overland Park to the ballpark and was injured pretty badly, but he still wanted to come to the ballpark, and the Royals had to keep him away for a while. He's about as tough as they come. I mean, for a guy that's around 66 years old, I mean, he's in great shape. He gets out there and chases fly balls in center field, throws batting practice, and, he, and he's a. The ultimate outdoors. I mean, he's, he, anything outdoors, he's going to do. Ball third strike to Laporta, and it's a three up, three down, eight for Ramirez. Three run sixth. With MLB.com mobile services, you can get text updates, watch videos, and listen to games live on your mobile phone. To find out what's available, text SHOP to 65246. Standard message fees apply. Products are available from select carriers on select handsets. Oh and one on Coco two ground balls to short and a line out to left field. Ball two strikes. Hey, Cliff Lee still mixing his pitches really well. Good fastball to change up. 
fast, tailing fastball away to right. He's coming down underneath with the curveball. Very close pitch. Well, we are talking to Tom Hamilton, the longtime radio voice of the Indians, and he said Cliff Lee had a couple of rough starts to begin the year, but he is pitching as good now as he was when he won the Cy Young. And he's convinced me tonight. <laughs> well, you can you can really tell some of the Raw's hitters are kind of jumpy up there. They're kind of jumping at the fastball and. And when you command in all of your all-speed pitches, and all of a sudden you see more and more fastballs taken tonight uh, with, with no movement from the from the hitters, so it means they're really so focused on his other pitches that the fastball's getting by. And just like right there, Coco's probably looking off speed and those fastballs and fouls it over the over the first base dugout. So that means he's really got command of his other pitches. Jin Su Chu in right field makes the play. You know, something that Cliff Lee does, and it's somewhat stigmatized. You know, they say you got to keep the ball down, keep the ball down. He can effectively pitch up where he's not hurt. He gets routine fly balls like he just got from Coco Chris. Well, if he's down with his other pitches, like, like his changeup, his curveball, his slaughter, then. Why would you want to throw your fastball in that same eyesight range so he can throw the borderline fastball which has some natural telling movement and then he can also cut it so uh, that's why he gets the fly balls. And another one. Same result. Diaspo one out of four. And Cliff Lee isn't even at 100 pitches yet so he's in line to go the distance. Kyle Farnsworth will be pitching the top of the ninth inning. If you like obscure statistics, the Cleveland Indians have given up the most runs in the major leagues in the eighth inning. 40. They've only scored 15. That's also the largest differential. Now that doesn't apply so much tonight because Cliff Lee has gone into the eighth inning, but the Indians very happy with picking up Kerry Wood as their closer during the offseason, but getting it to Wood has really been an issue. And they may not have to worry about Kerry Wood tonight. Cliff Lee might go the distance. He gets a one, two, three, eight. Tonight by Panera Bread, explore a menu full of hearty soups, hand-tossed salads, inventive sandwiches, and savory breakfast items. Panera Bread, where every detail matters. Beautiful shot of Coffin Stadium from 
Arrowhead Stadium, which is a year behind Coffin Stadium. Mickey Larson with that beautiful shot of the ballpark, and it's a beautiful shot in here tonight. Maybe not so much the scoreboard, but 78 degrees at first pitch. And that weather is supposed to continue for the next couple of days with a night game tomorrow against Cleveland and then an afternoon game on Thursday and then the Royals head off to St. Louis. Oh and two on Kelly Shopik as the Royals make a pitching change in the ninth inning. Great job by Horacio Ramirez two scoreless innings with a walk and a strikeout. One ball and two strikes on Kelly Shopik, who had a two run home run against Brian Bannister in the sixth inning. That capped a three run sixth and turned a two to one game into a five to one game. The Royals added a run in the bottom of the sixth. But now have to score three against perhaps Cliff Lee. It looks like Indians might. Get working in their bullpen, but Lee is just over 100 pitches. And I'm sure if you were to ask the man who's standing at the plate right now, he'd really like to like his starting pitcher to go the distance. It's always a big feather in a pitcher's cap when, when they can do that. That means they minimize the, their pitch count and, and they got a lot of early, early outs and in innings to get to the last last night to get to the ninth inning because. Uh, you get this close and you don't get it done, then you're really disappointed. Billy with a running, leaping play. Well, this is not an easy play from a right handed batter. The ball slicing away, and Billy just takes one step and goes up. Shows a lot of agility right there. So Billy saves a rocket off the bat of Shopik, and now here's Luis Valbuena. One for three with a bunt single back in the fifth inning, and then in that same inning had a collision with Miguel Olivo, which resulted in Olivo landing on his backside and Valbuena getting a cut under the lip. One and one. So this is a rundown play, Castro. Notices Bob Bueno breaks for the plate and makes the throw to Olivo, who squares up on Bob Bueno. But with, with that much momentum coming and Olivo stationary, he had to lose that battle. One hop to Kiaspo. Two down in the ninth inning. So a couple of well hit balls, but right into the Royals' right side of the infield and brings up as Drupal Cabrera Cabrera's had an excellent night doubled and scored in the first singled in the fifth so two hits one of his outs was a line out to center field and he's been perfect up the middle behind Cliff Lee. Cabrera playing well offensively and defensively and Johnny Peralta who has been the Indians regular shortstop for several years is one of many Indians off to a slow start batting at just 257. One ball two strikes. Cabrera's from the Mariners organization, and what a deal for the Indians. Back in 06, they traded Eduardo Perez to Seattle. Seattle needed a veteran right hand bat. By the time the year was over, Eduardo Perez had retired. And the next year, Cabrera was the Indians' starting second baseman and really helped them 
with a late season push. They won the division. They won the first round and were one game away from the World Series. Losing to Boston they had been ahead three games to one Boston came back won that series and won the World Series. Left center to Jesus chasing diving and making the play. So three drives off the bat of. Shafik Valbuena and Cabrera. But Butler. Diaspo now to Jesus making good plays. Lee's Summit in reference to Cliff Lee who is 12 and 5 against the Royals coming in tonight. Ryan Bannister similar start tonight as his one on Wednesday at Oakland a, a strong start kind of a slow finish as well as post game interviews highlights and analysis coming up on Boulevard Royals live with Joel and Jamie brought to you by Boulevard Brewing Company Kansas City's beer here's Kerry Wood. On for his sixth save. He has blown one. And the Royals have some thunder coming up in the lineup with Guillen, Jacobs, and Tian. Up the middle, but Valbuena was shaded that way, so Guillen is out. Hit it hard. And he is two for four. The problem for Cleveland this year is just getting the ball to Kerry Wood. Only six save opportunities in the first quarter of the season. This will be a seventh tonight. The Indians coming in tonight with the highest ERA in the American League, 5.65. And Kerry Wood, even though he's five out of six in save opportunities, has an ERA of 5.8. Coming in tonight, and that's ball one to Mike Jacobs. That end is going to have to get that down because it's going to be hard to average six runs a game uh, for, for an extended period of time. So the pitch is going to have to get better if they're going to elevate themselves into the big. Two and zero. Oh, we showed you before the game started how much the Royals' offense has improved. From last year at this point in the season. And some of the categories, there aren't huge improvements, but there are improvements. Heading in the right direction on base percentage is certainly one where the Royals have improved. They're drawing more walks. But specifically, if you're wondering where the Royals were a year ago tonight, and if you're talking Eastern time, they had just been no hit by John Lester. Which was the beginning of a 12 game losing streak. The Royals had just 
been in Miami to play the Marlins. Mike Jacobs is with the Marlins. The Royals took two out of three. They were playing excellent baseball. They had gone to one game below 500, but that John Lester game turned it all around. Well, I tell you, you get in the middle of a 12 game losing streak, I tell you, it, it, it's no fun at all. I mean, you, you try everything and anything to try to get it turned around, and, and one day it's the pitching, next day it's the hitting, next day it's the defense, next day it's the base running. So you just run the gambit until you can bring it all back together again. Now Jacobs was not only on his way to first, he was ready to toss the bat. And the Royals bat boy was halfway to home plate to get the bat. Uh, Kerry Wood throws a nice running fastball toward the outside corner. Last one out. I think now he, he don't want to take this next one. <laughs> He's got to figure out a way to foul it off. Just got a piece. Well, that's a tough pitch for a, a, a hitter like Jacobs. He likes to pull the ball. And he's got to try to extend himself, and at some point, he wants to try to swing around that ball. And, and sometimes it, it crunches those fingers, and it doesn't, it's, it's not comfortable when you make a swing when you want to pull, and you got to you got to extend yourself. And you can only go so far before it rolls over automatically. Royals need two base runners for a chance. Still three and two. Kerry Wood last year. Very successful full season as the Cubs closer and got. Two year contract to do the same for the Indians. There was a time when many people in baseball thought this guy would have a den full of Cy Young awards. He was the first overall pick in 1995 out of high school in Texas, rookie of the year in 98. He had a 20 strikeout game his rookie year. But he went on the disabled list 12 times. That ball is gone. Them, you know. Well, when they get when they get the fastball down and in the middle, th that's the pitch he likes to hit right there. And he got real, he got extended on it. He got extended down, and that's his power alley right there, right center field. And now Tian into deep left field. Laporta is back. It's a one-run game. Marcus been driving the ball that direction all night, and Kerry Wood left the fastball out over the plate, running away from him. He just stayed on it, and we've seen him hit that ball a lot of times, even going back to spring training. And when he hits him that way, they almost like a right hand hitter. Right hand hitter hits him, it just stays straight. That was a big, big home run right there for T and the ball. Take a look at this one, right? 
Ball just out over the plate. Marcus stays with it. He just hit that ball like a right-handed hitter. It had no slice or anything. It just, it just shot out the left center field. One and one on Olivo. That's the first back-to-back -back home runs for the Royals. Since a game in July. Last July at Tampa Bay, John Buck and Mike Avilas. Two and one. And if you're wondering about back to back to back home runs, 2006, Tony Graffinino, Angel Baroa, and Doug Minkavich. Three balls, one strike. Taking all the way on three and one. A two run home run would win it. And David DeJesus has done that this year against Kerry Wood, at least a two run home run. And well, if he hits it in that zone, that zone about belt high, no land, that's David's zone. Miguel Olivo, three and one, a count that you think he'd be looking to try to drive the ball. Just said, oh, I'm just going to make you throw a strike right here. How about that? And just left his bat on his shoulder. It turned out to be uh, a good move for him. So Mitch Meyer will run for him. So the tying run at first with one out. And ball one on to Jesus. For two tonight. The home run for the Jesus against Kerry Wood. That's his only at bat ever against Wood. Driven into right center. This is going to roll deep. Meyer around third base. The Royals are going to tie the game. And DeJesus is on his way to third with a triple. Said David likes the ball belt high middle. The ball is supposed to have been away and he got it back toward the middle, middle of the plate. And David met it with a good swing and ended up with a triple in the right center field. He just got that one hot zone and, and Kerry Wood hit it right there. Trey Hillman dare squeeze again. <laughs> well, it's not as easy to do against a guy like Kerry Wood throwing 97 miles an hour, but it's not out of the question. Well, I'm sure the Indians are aware that Trey laid down, or at least put the squeeze side on for two consecutive plays. Winning run at third base with one out. Bloomquist 0 for 3. It's away from Shopik, but he keeps it in front of him. It's one and one. <laughs> Willie Bloomquist has only faced Kerry Wood once, 0 for 1. Well, with the infield in, he got some advantage. He can hit the ball the other way and get it over the infield. That would be a big plus for him. He doesn't try to do too much. He just wants to put the bat on the ball. So the way he uses the middle and right field, he got an opportunity to put the ball in play. And 
anything short in the air that all the outfielders will come in and so it's got to be a clean base hit to get, get David in there or make the outfielders go back a little bit on a sack block. Three and one with Coco Crisp on deck. Well, there's Jamie out in Rival Sports Bar. It was a three run Cleveland lead going into the ninth. Kerry Wood got Jose Guillen on a ground ball to second base, and now Jamie and Joel are going to have to wait a while. <laughs> Right field should be deep enough. Chew the catch. De Jesus to the plate. A four run ninth inning, and the Royals win it. John Lester's no hitter at Fenway Park tonight. It's for the Royals. After a four run bottom of the ninth inning, they take game one. They erase Cliff Lee's great outing and win six to five. So, what's the difference between the Royals last year and this year? There you go. There you go, right there. You know, back to back home runs, a triple, a sack fly. I mean, they did everything they had to do to win this ball game, and, and it's just amazing how fast the game can turn around. And here's David tagging up on this play right here. Chu had to back up, and when he had to go backwards, that was enough to get David in there. Mike Jacobs, who's become one of the Royals' emotional leaders, he started all this with a solo home run. Mark Tian followed with a home run. Miguel Olivo taking a walk and taking all the way on a 3 1 pitch. Mitch Meyer running for him. De Jesus triples him home. And Willie Bloomquist gets De Jesus to the plate to win it. Royals win it. Time now for Boulevard Royals Live. 